Hey guys, Mrs. Stans here. Sorry, I can't be in today. I am on my way to recovery though, so hope to see you soon. Anyway, we're on lesson three, which is solving systems of equations again, but this time it's called by elimination. And you'll see the reason why it's called elimination is because we're going to eliminate one of our variables. Um, there is a do now that you should be able to do without me, but of course I will do it on this video also. And there are homework answers for you to check. So <coughs> um, if you could just check those to make sure that you're set for when I return, that would be great. So let's first do the do now. So we need to solve this by substitution, which is the method you learned yesterday. Remember, with substitution, we need to find something that is our substitute. I always like to put a box around it. Neither one of these look like a substitute yet. Um, the best way to find a substitute is to look for a variable whose coefficient is 1. Um, so that would mean that I could use my top equation and either solve for x or y, or I could use my bottom equation and solve for x. I wouldn't solve for y since that's a minus y, which means its coefficient is negative 1. I choose to solve the bottom equation for x, so I'm going to add y to both sides. And notice how I said that's what I choose. That's not the only way of doing it. Um, you will get the same answer if you solve the top equation for either x or y. But with me solving this bottom equation, I now found that x is my substitute. So in the top equation where I see an x, I'm going to put the 2 plus y. So in place of x, I'll put a 2 plus y. And then it still says plus y equals 8. So I just rewrote my top equation with the x substituted in. So now I'm just going to solve this equation for y, combine our like terms, subtract 2, divide both sides by 2, and y equals 3. Once you know what y is, you could substitute it back into the box to find your x. I always go and substitute it back into the box. You really could substitute it into either of the original equations as well, but you'll see that I always substitute into the box. So now I know my xy pair it's 5 comma 3. It does say be sure to check, so I will do a check here. I'm checking to make sure 5, 3 works in both original equations. The check always has to be in the original. So I'm actually going to call this check number 1, which means I'm checking in my first original equation. And I do this work here, and I get 8. 8 equals 8, so check number 1 worked. Now I'll do check number 2. Still I'm checking the point 5, 3. I'm checking it in x minus y equals 2. So does 5 minus 3 equal 2? Well, 5 minus 3 is 2, so 2 equals 2. So I found a solution to this uh, system of equations using the substitution method. Notice that number two is the same two equations, but now it says solve it graphically. That's why there's a graph here. If you see a graph, probably you have to graph, right? So make sure you solve this graphically now. For some reason, some students, they see that there's a graph. They see it says solve graphically, but then they do um, an algebraic solution, which is like what we did in number one. Uh, remember, to solve graphically, both equations must be in y equals mx plus b form, and I must start at b, which is my y-intercept, and then I must do my slope, which is the rise over the run. So if I rewrite my first equation, I have to sub subtract x from both sides. <clears throat> so y equals negative x plus 8, which means my slope is a negative 1 over 1, and my y-intercept is an 8. My second equation, um, I have to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I get negative y equals negative x plus 2, but I don't want negative y, I need a positive y, so I do have to divide both sides by negative 1. 
So y equals, remember this negative 1, has to divide into both parts of my numerator. So now I get a positive x minus 2. So for my second equation, I'm going to graph. The slope is 1 over 1, because there's a 1 in front of this x. And my y-intercept is negative 2. So I will graph the first one. I will keep with that orange color. And I will start at 8. And I'll go down one right one. This scale goes by ones on both the x-axis and the y-axis. So down one box over one box is really going down one unit over one unit. It's not perfect, but doing the best I can here. Uh, we should label this. I always label it the original, so it's x plus y equals 8. And now, if we graph the second equation, I'm going to start at negative 2. The slope is positive 1, so up 1 over 1. Notice how I'm extending to the edges of the graph. You should never just draw short little lines. Lines go on forever, so you should draw them as far as you possibly can. And you should put arrows at the ends as well. Label it. If on systems of equations you do not label, you will not get full credit. That's a guarantee. Um, the solution is right where the two lines intersect. It's at the point 5, comma, 3. Coincidence that it's the same answer as up here? No. Remember, they were the same equations. So this just proved to you that we can solve a system by substitution, or we could solve a system graphically. Either way, it gets us the same answer. So on a test or a quiz, if it asks you to solve the system and it doesn't tell you which way, you get to choose your way. Honestly, I would never choose graphically. Uh, I would only do graphically if they told me to. Because remember, sometimes when we solve things graphically, it crosses in between boxes, and now that wasn't an efficient method. So uh, algebraically, we'll always get you an exact answer. Only solve graphically if they tell you to graph. But anyway, that was review of what you learned lesson one and lesson two. So now lesson three, we're solving a system now by elimination. So notice these are the same <coughs> two equations. So we know what the answer is supposed to turn out to be. Right? It's supposed to be 5, 3. Um, but I have to teach you the elimination method. So there's steps written down here. I'm not going to read through them with you. I'm just going to go through uh, how you solve it, and you'll see that it does follow the steps. First of all, um, everything needs to be lined up, which means uh, the x's the y's, the equal signs, and the constants. We like the x and y's on the left side of the equal sign and the constants over on the right side. Next, we have to make sure that the coefficients of one of the variables are opposites. So the coefficients of the x are both 1. So those aren't opposites. Those are the same. Um, the coefficients of the y's are opposites because this is a positive one and this is a negative one. So remember, opposites are the same number, different sign. The opposite of 5 is negative 5, and so on. So um, parts are lined up, and I do have coefficients that are opposites. So now it's time to add the two equations together. So 1x plus 1x is 2x, plus a positive 1y and a negative 1y is a 0y. I don't have to write down 0y, I just don't have to write it down at all. The y's got eliminated. And 8 plus 2 is 10. And now I have a simple equation that I could solve by dividing both sides by 2. And look at the minimum amount of work that I needed to do just to already find that x is 5. So now, to find the other variable, it's what we've always done. I do have to go back and substitute it in. You get to pick either equation, either the top one or the bottom one, and you substitute in the 5 for x to find the y. So I'm just going to use the top one, and I'm going to put a 5 in place of the x. 
And when I solve for y, I get that y is 3. So now I know my answer is 5 comma 3. You would have to do a check. We already did a check on number 1, and these are all the same uh, systems that are giving us the same answer. So, of course, the check works. Um, but that's it. So sometimes things aren't set up as easily as this, right? Sometimes the parts aren't lined up, and we'll have to do that. And sometimes we don't have opposites, and we'll have to find that. So now it's time to move on to equations that uh, systems that maybe there's a little more work to do. I just need to go back and remind myself what I want to do. So I did the model problem. I'm going to skip 1 and 2, and I'm going to go do 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then I'll have taught you everything you need to know. You could go back and do some of the classwork problems that we didn't do together as extra practice. All right, so 3, 4, 5, and 6, I said. So here we go. So on number three, the parts are lined up. Look, at the x's are lined up, the y's are lined up, the equal signs are lined up, and the constants are lined up. But I don't have opposites. Eight and negative three, those aren't opposites of each other. Positive one y and a positive one y, they aren't opposites of each other. So I always try and pick the uh, easier variable to get opposites. I think it would be really easy to make the y's opposites. I think um, all I need is like a negative 1. So we know about that multiplication property of equality, that whatever you do to one side of an equation, you could do to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to pick the bottom equation and choose to multiply both sides by a negative 1. If I multiply both sides by a negative 1, my bottom equation now says 3x minus y equals 5. My top equation, I didn't change it, so I'm just going to rewrite that. My top equation said 8x plus y equals negative 16. But now I have opposites. So now I can add these equations together. 8x and 3x is 11x. Positive y, negative y, they eliminate each other. Negative 16 plus 5 is negative 11. Divide both sides by 11, and I get my x value of negative 1. Now you just take that and plug it into one of the equations. I'm just going to pick the top one for the heck of it. In place of x, I put a negative 1. I solve for y by adding 8 to both sides and I get that y is negative 8, which means I think my solution is negative 1 comma negative 8. Notice how I said I think my solution is? If I didn't make any mistakes, that is my solution. I am going to do a check just to check and make sure I didn't do it, make any mistakes. So check number 1, uh, 8 times in place of x, I'll put my negative 1, plus in place of y, I'll put my negative 8 equals negative 16. So I have negative 8 plus negative 8, which, guess what, is negative 16. So my first check worked. Check number 2. Um, I'll do negative 3 times negative 1 plus negative 8 equals negative 5. Remember, you check it into the original equations, never like your changed equation. So now I have a 3 plus a negative 8. And 3 plus negative 8 is negative 5. So that second check worked. So that's what you do if you don't have opposites. Pick it up. It's mommy. That was my mother checking on me. Anyway, now we're going to do number 4. We need to have... The x's lined up, the y's lined up, the equal signs lined up, and the constants lined up, and they are. We just don't have opposites. So I can't just multiply by a negative 1 this time because I wouldn't have the same number of opposite signs. But something that stands out to me is if I multiplied the top equation by a 2, that would work out, right? So um, if I multiply the left side by a 2, Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And my top equation now says 8x 
uh, minus 18y equals 6. The bottom equation I'm not going to change. It's a negative 8x plus 18y equals 6. And it's kind of looking strange, looking like a lot of things are going to eliminate. But let's go through the process and see what really happens. When I add 8x negative 8x, I do get 0x. When I add negative 18y and positive 18y, I do get 0y. And when I add 6 and 6, I get 12. Now this really should be an equation, so I can't leave this left side blank. Crossing out really means it's a 0. But does 0 equal 12? No. And we've learned about this before. Remember, when you're left with nonsense, it really means that there's no solution. It means that there's no value of x or y that um, both these equations share. Uh, think back to lesson one. Remember, we were trying to find where these things crossed. I guess these two lines don't cross if there's no solution. I guess these two lines are parallel. So without even graphing this, I know that the lines are parallel because there is no solution. There is no place that they cross, no point that they share. If there's no solution, then there is no check for us to do. Let's do number five. Uh, things are lined up. I just don't have opposites. On this one, I can't just multiply the top equation by something, and I can't just multiply the bottom equation by something. Like, I can't turn a 7 into a 4, and I can't turn a 4 into a 7, I can't turn an 8, ugh, right? So I actually want to multiply the top equation by a number and the bottom equation by a number. I just want to point out something that I just wrote here. Notice how I put the parentheses at the beginning of this equation and at the end of this equation, where up here I was doing the left side and the right side. I could have up here, just let me show you, I could have just put parentheses around this whole thing and said I'm going to multiply the whole equation by a negative 1. And it means everything, both sides of the equation. So it's just kind of like a shortcut. Um, and that shortcut is something I'm going to use on this problem. So I'm going to try and eliminate my x's. Uh, that's what I'm going to try and do. I see that if the x's were both 28, right, because I could turn a 7 into a 28 if I multiply it by 4, and I could turn a 4 into a 28 if I multiply it by 7. The only thing right now, if I use 4 and 7, they're both going to be negative 28. I need one positive, one negative. So I'm just going to put a negative in front of one of them. It actually doesn't matter if it's the top equation or the bottom equation. Anyway, I am going to multiply this through now. And remember, you're always allowed to use a calculator if you need to. I would hope though, that you knew some of your multiplication facts here. So that's what my top equation becomes. My bottom equation, oops, I forgot my x here. Do you see that? Uh, my bottom equation in case you need your calculator becomes a 28x and what is 9 times 7, guys. Uh, negative 63y. And what is 22 times 7? And negative times negative is positive, so it's a positive 154. Now, if I add these equations together, the x's are eliminated. The y's are negative 95y. And the constants is 190. Divide both sides by negative 95. I am going to pull up my calculator again. 190. divided by negative 95 is negative 2. 
And now I have to find the x. I'm just going to use the top equation. In place of my y, I'm going to put my negative 2. I'll subtract 16. Divide by negative 7. And x is 1. I think my answer is 1 comma negative 2. Again, I have to do my check to definitely know if I did it right. I make mistakes sometimes. So I'm going to check myself. I'm going to do my check number 1 here. So negative 7 times 1 minus 8 times negative 2. Does that equal 9? It does. Check number two, negative four times one plus nine times negative two, does that equal negative 22? And this one also works out. Good job. So the answer is one negative two. And the last one I'm going to do with you is number six. You can see this one doesn't have everything lined up. Remember how I said we like the x's and the y's on the left side of the equal sign and the constants on the right? So I have a few things I have to manipulate around here. On the first equation, I'm going to subtract this three from both sides so that I have two x minus y equals negative three. On the second equation, um, what will I do? Let's uh, add 3 to both sides. I'm just going to write this over here for now. I have negative 7y equals 10x plus 3. But now I'm going to subtract this 10x from both sides. And I'm going to write my answer over there. I have negative 10x minus 7y equals 3. And now I need some opposites. I think uh, getting the y's opposites will be easier because this y here has a coefficient of negative 1. All I have to do is make it a 7. So I'm going to multiply this top equation not just by 7 because then it would be a negative 7, same as the bottom one, but I'll multiply it by a negative 7. So my top equation is now negative 14x plus 7y equals 21. And my bottom equation I'm going to keep as is. My y's are opposite, so I can add. I get negative 24x, the y's eliminate, equals 24. Divide both sides by negative 24. x equals negative 1. And then use one of the equations to find the y. Um, I'm going to use the top equation. Don't forget you can combine these. And instead of subtracting 1 and then, and then dividing by a negative 1, I'm just going to add this y to both sides because now my y is positive and it says 1 equals y. So now I found what y was. So x is negative 1, y is positive 1. And you would have to do a check. I'm going to skip the check on this one though. I'm going to say I'm done. Um, I want you to make sure you do your homework, which are these following pages. and. In um, my Google post, I actually have another video that I created a few years ago that actually does some of the homework with you. So if you're having a hard time on your homework, when you're at home, watch that second video. It's not mandatory, but it will be helpful. I think I actually like give you all the answers at the end so that you know if you did your homework right. So even if you just wanted to do your homework and then just kind of like scroll through the video to see if you got all the right answers, that would be great. Um, 
and that's that. So remember, you're working as hard as you can. I'll answer any questions that you have when I see you, and hope to see you soon. See ya. Bye.